From mid laners who can't stop playing junglers, to iconic off meta legends, to pros popping off on champions that hardly even exist in pro play, these are 10 more times when pros locked in crazy picks that actually worked, beginning first with the now infamous Garen Yumi bot lane. Now the bot lane is of course a role known primarily for its ranged champions that cut down enemies health bars from a distance and by design are intended to be ideal counters to bruiser type champions who have little mobility and can only dish out high damage when they're up close and personal. In Garen is perhaps the prime example of this playstyle as his little mobility and practically zero range means that he should theoretically be easily beaten like his bruiser counterparts, however pros began to realize something that Garen had that similar champions didn't. Wait a minute! What? That's locked Wait, in! What? Is, this, is this Garen Yumi ball lane? And it wasn't even just Fnatic who was making this absurd pick either, so what was so special about it, and how could such an outlandish strategy even possibly work in the first place? You see, when the game started, both Garen and Yumi each bought a support item, and throughout the laning phase, the player controlling Yumi would continuously fire prowling projectiles while ensuring that their Garen's health bar was consistently topped off due to their immense combined sustain. And as the game progressed, using the influx of support item gold, Yumi would be able to pick up more and more mage items to dish out the hurt even more, creating a two-person wall that could effectively neutralize enemies on their own. And this strategy was so effective that not only was it pulled out in the middle of the LEC Summer Split, but it also made a surprise appearance a few months later at Worlds 2019 in a bout between Fnatic and eventual champions FPX, whose bot lane clearly wasn't prepared for the spin to win might of Demacia. Indeed, that's a flash ball no. from Reckless, the final chapter as well. Great play from Chris to re-engage. Demacian Justice comes down, but Hilly picks up the final hit onto LWA. But whether it was coincidence or not, this wasn't the only time Fnatic did some cooking in Game 1 of a World's Quarterfinals, as just one year later they had another spicy top lane pick brewing up, and this time it was in the hands of who else but the legendary Wide Whippo. Often renowned for his explosive bruiser picks as well as his occasional call of the Ornhorn, Whippo is no stranger to mixing things up in the top lane, and against eventual MSI champion 369, he dug up one of the least popular champions in pro play history, much to the surprise of both fans and casters alike. Side of top esports. We have Singe locked in for the first game of Fnatic versus Top Esports quarterfinal. Now, Singed is a champion that undoubtedly has a very unique playstyle due to his damage almost solely relying on the burning chemicals that he leaves behind him. However, when it came to facing the composition of JDG, it would be his other abilities that truly would allow him to shine. As despite relying on this strange method of dealing damage, Singed W Mega Adhesive is one of just three abilities in the game that grounds enemies in place, making them unable to dash or blink out of the impacted area, which becomes especially useful when facing champions like Ezreal who rely heavily on his mobility. And in combination with Singe's point and click ability to flip champions behind him as well as his amazingly disruptive area coverage, Whipple proved that when it comes to cooking up something in a lab, sometimes all you really need is a dose of chaos from the mad scientist. 369 lost embrace, holding him in place, Koss is gonna get chucked Whoa! backwards, flying into the poison trail from Whippo as Koss is sent to the fountain. But of course, we can't talk about Fnatic's off-meta picks without mentioning the likeness of Caps, who is the first of three players on this list who have brought out their inner jungler in the mid lane of all places. And as for the then-heralded baby Faker, this inner beast was unleashed in the form of Locking in Kane, a traditionally jungle-exclusive champion that also happens to hold the immensely strong roaming capabilities of a mid lane assassin like Talon, something that Caps made sure to take full advantage of throughout the game. As by consistently leaving lane to collect orbs, on top of already being hard to catch when he was actually in lane, Caps was able to stack up his damage even higher by opting to build high damage lethality items whose impact was only furthered more by its strength in combination with Kane's blue shadow assassin form. And in part due to a couple of oversteps from then Misfits ADC Hansama, Caps managed to take these early advantages and snowball them to the point of near unstoppability, creating one of League's wildest casting lines in the process. Yeah, this is not a fun game if you're no, in here. Hansama, about to no. find out again, all the is out far, just like that, the Umbral Trespass is on, but Maxlor is here. The babysitter can't keep the baby alive! God damn it, and getting another kill, but he might give his life for it as the rest of Misfits have reacted. No, he's gonna flash, he's gonna shadow step, and would you believe it, Caps is gonna get out! And fittingly enough, following suit in the second of our three jungler-loving mid laners, we have not just Baby Faker, but rather the legend himself, bringing off meta early game dominance to the world stage. You see, in a group stage match versus the Bangkok Titans, BKT's mid laner 
trainer G4 locked in pre-rework Irelia, who at the time was more of a stat check duelist. However, in an unexpected twist, Faker decided to confront this challenge head on by pulling out an Olaf mid, a champion who, while not a mid laner, was a great counter to Irelia in the lane. Due to Olaf's highly renowned early game melee might, Faker was able to match G4 in early trading. However, by using Olaf's notably higher upfront damage in addition to his already increased strength at low health, G4's disrespect to this counter pick backfired big time. And like an all in is possible oh, wow. to do the damage. You can see G4 trying to Oh, there's a ghost. He popped it. He's going after G4. He's got no flash. He's got no life. There it is. First blood. 1v1. Olaf versus Aurelia. That's a sentence that was actually said in the World Championships. And things only escalated further out of control from there as not only did Faker dominate the laning phase with this pick, but he continued to rack up more and more kills throughout the course of the game and landing the final blow across various skirmishes and taking over fights to the point that he finished the game with a remarkable 8-2-8 scoreline. Which probably shouldn't be too surprising since T1 was pretty alright that year after all. But while locking in an off-meta counter pick to run through a notably weaker team is fun and all, what about locking in a champion for the first time in a major region's history whilst down 2-0 in a best of 5 promotion series? You see, in a 2015 EU LCS promotion series between teams Millennium and Unicorns of Love, things were beginning to look more and more like Millennium was going to just clean sweep their opponents as they managed to pick up a 2-0 lead over the Unicorns headed into a potentially series ending game 3. That is, until the teams reached the final pick of the draft, in which Unicorns of Love top laner Vizichachi brought out one of the most forgotten champions in the game from seemingly nowhere as a hidden ace up his sleeve. Yes, he's gonna run probably goes flat Whoa, here. What? what? Okay! Vizichachi locks in Poppy Top. Now, while Poppy Top nowadays is regarded as a commonly known counterpick to high mobility champions or team compositions, this certainly was no new shiny rework Poppy. Oh no, this was the pre rework abomination of a champion who was, simply put, a boring mess. And for those who may not have played prior to Poppy's rework, she was essentially an anti carry whose goal was to stat check one target to death by just beating them senseless with her hammer. Not to mention that her old ultimate, Diplomatic Immunity, involved her selecting a target to be the only enemy she could take damage or CC from for several seconds, which was about as fun to play against as it might sound. But as for how this pick performed in the hands of Vizichachi, it was certainly a smart selection as Dr. Mundo couldn't really do much into Poppy's weak early game, allowing her to scale up her abilities and rain terror upon Millennium as they could really do nothing except watch this unhittable nuisance stack check them into oblivion. The Mundo, where's the Vizichachi Vizichachi goes in, finds Kerb, Kerb did get the kill of Power of Evil, but by by the way, Poppy is going to kill you, but they might trade back on the AD carry. Vardox, no, he stays alive. Creation for the Chachi again in the mix, and down he goes. Wow, the Poppy damage is massive. And on the topic of champions that were definitely in need of a rework, let's turn back time to what is easily the oldest off meta pick on this list, which involved using a strategy that nowadays is basically non existent, even outside of the professional environment. During the finals of Intel Extreme Masters 2012, fans were treated to a series between Dignitas and Moscow 5 that kicked off with quite an interesting game one due to the strength of M5 Genja's last pick Urgot. After picking up blue buff shortly after the game started, Genja then recalled to buy four potions and teleported into the bot lane, and due to the immense amount of mana now at his disposal, he was able to comfortably 1v2 the bot lane of Dignitas while the rest of his team used their number advantages to take leads elsewhere. And not only was this 1v2 effective for the sake of Moscow 5 taking over the jungle, but Genja was actually winning in the bot lane, leading to playmaking that began to take the team's lead and truly spiral it out of control. On the levels. Oh, you can see Gen just caught on towards Locus. He will get the lock on. Gami Kuchipa is going to try and help out. He will lose. Oh, and he's had to heal up as well. I don't think it's going to be enough. He uses the ulti. And that's going to be surely Locus going down. Will get stunned up. The exhaust went down, but Moscow 5 are dominating. However, this Urgot pick wasn't the only champion which Genja was able to make a name for himself, as during that same year, he would bring an additional, more widely known curveball to the table in AD Kennen. A champion he would only play a couple of times himself, but would eventually truly hit the league scene a couple of years later through a certain ADC player you may have heard of before. Is that an AD cannon? It is. Oh my goodness, Absolute. this is one of my absolute all-time favorites. It's a huge shout-out back to, I can't even remember his name. 
Now even though Reckless is of course known for his aforementioned days of skillfully spinning to win, his most signature off meta pick to this day still remains his AD Cannon, as it's been played many times throughout his career, with perhaps his most significant performance coming against both his close friend and competitor, then EDG Death. You see, during Worlds 2015, the two off Rift teammates were pitted against each other in the quarterfinals due to an unfortunate draw, and despite having had only two games of prior experience on the champion in professional play, Reckless was willing to let this unexpected flex pick fall into his hands headed into game one of this best of five series. And despite initially having a rough early game, back-to-back -back skirmishes in the river allowed Reckless to spearhead the game as the team's carry, leading them in crucial fights and ultimately helped cement Fnatic's victory in the series ahead. Porn has started to channel his TP, but it may be too late. Two and a half thousand hit points on Baron. Will it get secured by a Fnatic? And it does! The knockup finds two, the oh! dunk finds four, and the Maelstrom melts Edward Gaming! Sending a massive message that Fnatic want to win the first game in this series. And in a somewhat similar situation during last year's MSI, Caps Nautilus mid was quickly taken up as a tournament staple. However, even this pick drew from past inspirations from a player who had actually beaten him with this very pick in Worlds Finals a few years prior. And who else could this player be except the Eastern off meta legend, Doombi? Now, Doombi 2 is known for a variety of spicy mid lane picks himself, be it his Kled, Renekton, or in this case, his legendary Nautilus, which served as one of his favorite pocket picks throughout the course of Worlds 2019, even playing it four times throughout the semifinals and finals combined, taking down some of League's biggest names in the process. All right, there's going to be a gank mid, no fight bottom yet, dredge line will tag, remember no flash from earlier. By building Nautilus with AP items, Doombi was not only able to serve as an effective CC setup for mid lane ganks and teamfight assistance, but he was also capable of dishing out a respectable amount of damage, leading to a lockdown champion with the punch to make a difference in fights as well. And as previously alluded to, Doombi was so confident in this pick that he locked it in during Worlds Finals, shutting down G2's lethal pike mid, piloted fittingly by his future Nautilus mid predecessor, Caps. But while support champions mid are cool and all, T1 Caria has made a name for himself with iconic support picks a different way by taking the seemingly most random champions and turning them into viable supports against some of the game's best players. As it doesn't matter if it's Yasuo, Jin, or his recent edition of Rumble, Caria will find a way to shoehorn a champion into the role by any means necessary if the situation calls for it, sometimes much to the dismay of people just trying to enjoy some solo queue without a teammate convinced they've been possessed by some of the world's best mechanics. To which Karia has reminded support hopefuls that you are not me and your teammates are not T1, which in fairness is a needed dose of reality because after all, sometimes Karia really is the second best ADC in the game and these abnormally impressive skills for a support player in all regards only backs him up even further. The power of an all-in uh from an all-in of this lane is still immeasurable, right? They both think six, Kellen doesn't have the wild growth available, and they immediately fully pull the trigger. And while we've already gone over Faker and Cap's willingness to bring the jungle to the mid lane, of course there is perhaps no better example of this off-meta flexibility than Alex Itch, an OG player who to this day still has one of the most unique champion pools of any mid laner in professional league history, even inspiring Faker's Master Yi mid, as discussed in the previous video. And even outside of this pick, throughout his career he boasts an impressive perfect record on Evelyn mid, having gone 7-0 across his games. However, his most famous crazy pick surely has to be his ever popular Kha'Zix mid lane, who would simply tear up fights and score pentakills in a matter of seconds. Frog in the middle, finds the loot ult as well, there's the unstoppable force used on the Genji, but he does not go down. Frog is really under pressure, legendary Alex wow. finds 1, 2, 3, 4, what? is it going to be 5? I can't actually tell, everyone is dead, and it is it's a pentakill! Kill for Alex Itch, and that's a good way to do it, just playing leapfrog out of that one. Being a part of the ever flexible Moscow 5 roster with the aforementioned oddball Genja alongside him, it didn't matter whether Alex Itch was Locky and Malphite or Trinomir because they were cool so long as they were dunking on their opponents by any means necessary, even if these means were quite outlandish to say the least. I really just want to say thank you guys so much for all the recent support on the last video. It is kind of crazy um how well that video did so hope you enjoyed the sequel as well and if you haven't already feel free to check me out on all my socials which are linked down below but yeah with that all being said hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night as always i'll catch you guys in the next video later